That's right. That's right. Get that Friday feeling going. It is Friday. It is April 3rd. Alexa, stop. You've got your fan five quiz today. But before you do that, we're going to go over day four. We're going to go over Thursday's Fantastic Five. I am hoping by the time you're watching this video, your teachers are staring at a computer and they are seeing a ton of really, really good scores. That is my hope. But ultimately, like I have said before, the only day that matters is today. So watch this video. Make sure any questions you might have, you're watching carefully so you can get them answered. Um, that way, when you get ready to knock out those five, you get your best score or you tie your best score of the week. So let's get right into it. We're going straight to number one. Here we go. It says Albert has 9,000 dog treats. If he snacks on 1,892 of them, and gives 1,984 of them to his buddy Trooper. How many treats does he have left? So again, I'll go a little bit of a different path than we went yesterday. Uh, what I'll do is I'll start with Albert's 9,000 treats. And let's just go ahead and get rid of the ones that he snacked on first. Let's get rid of 1,892 of them. This is the only part that really concerns me, the, the subtracting across zeros. Because in the ones place, you can't do it. You got to regroup. There's more on the floor. Go next door to get 10 more. When you knock on that door, there's nobody home. So we're going to the end of the block, boxing off the rest of the neighborhood. And I went from zero tens to now having 900 tens. But I still only need one. So if I take one ten away from 900, that's going to change to 899. And this zero will now become a 10 because I put it right there. Then I'm just going to subtract. 10 minus 2 is 8. 9 minus 9 is 0. 9 minus 8 is 1. And 8 minus 1 is 7. Now, the only uh, thing that worries me about doing it this way, if you've been doing it the other way, you know you've been doing the one-step subtraction stopping. But we've only gotten rid of what we snacked on. Now we got to get rid of what we gave to our buddy, Trooper. So we got to take those 7,108 treats and we're going to hand out 1,984 of them. All right, now don't make this harder than it has to be. Don't regroup if you don't need to. Look in the ones place. You can do eight minus four. More on top, no need to stop. Eight minus four is four. Moving to the tens place, zero minus eight. More on the floor. Go next door and get 10 more. This one is now going to be a zero. I'm going to take that 10. I'm going to pop it right here on this zero, and then I'm going to keep rolling. 10 minus 8 is 2. Boom. 0 minus 9. Again, more on the floor. Go next door and get 10 more. This 7 is now a 6, and that 10 that I took, I'm going to add it to that zero, and now I can subtract in my hundreds place. 10 minus 9 is 1, and then I'll put my comma down, and if I do my subtraction in the thousands place, 6 minus 1 is going to give me 5,000. 124 treats, which I believe was answer B. Yes. Now, I put uh, answer choice C on there for a reason. I did that on purpose. They use the same numbers. They look very similar. The orders just flip. It's going to be like that on the EOG, not just this year, next year, every year that you take it, or any test that you're taking. They're going to try to give you answers that are going to try to trick you. But on that one, uh, solved a little bit differently today, but that one would give you B. Moving to numero dos, there are 42 students in our class. They each have eaten 12 bags of Takis this week. How many total bags of Takis have been eaten? Again, total could make you think to add, but repeated addition is the same thing as multiplication. Bags of can kind of show you that as well. Um, let's do our area model today. Or I'll split them up by their values. We've got the number 42, which I would split up as 40 and 2. The number 12 would split as 10 and 2. And then again, it's like cars traveling. Where would they intersect? Right here, I would just multiply 40 times 10. Down below that, I would do 40 times 2. 
Here I'd multiply 2 times 10 and 2 times 2. We get a different color going for these. So remember, if they end in 0, you're just multiplying those first numbers, the basic fact. Um, oops, I'll plug my computer. Really, right here, I'm just doing 4 times 1 and putting 4 and adding two zeros. 4 times 2 is getting me 8, adding 1 zero. 2 times 10, you guys just know is 20. 2 times 2, you know is 4. Again, right here, you can go in a bunch of different directions. I usually like to add these two numbers here. That would give me 480. This would give me 24. But then I'd have to add those two numbers together. And that would give me 504, which is going to give you the answer choice of C. Again, if you look at B, you got a kind of similar looking number right there. Um, so make sure you're looking at your answer choices very carefully and just double checking your work in general. That's every question. All right, number three, multiplicative comparisons. Again, doesn't matter if you do the math right if you read the question wrong. All right, says I'm trying to sort my collection of 561 Pokemon cards into my new binder. Each page, each page can hold 12 Pokemon cards. What's the fewest number of pages I will need in my binder to fit all of my cards? Remember, each does not always mean to multiply. Logic, use it. It can also mean you're going to be dividing because, again, I'm putting them into equal groups of 12. Now, the word fewest is important because there might be a couple possible answers that you could choose that would fit all my Pokemon cards, but you don't want to buy more than you have to. You don't want to waste the money that you don't necessarily have to spend. So we would start with the division. We're going to take 561 divided by 12. And we know that 12 cannot go into five, but it can go into 56. This is where knowing your facts comes in handy. It can go into 56 four times. There's my division because 12 times 4 gets me 248. Then I would have to subtract and I'd have to do some regrouping. And 16 minus 8 is going to give me 8. 4 minus 4 is going to give me 0. You could bring a 0 down. You can leave it blank. It's not going to make a difference. And then I'm going to bring down the 1 and I'm going to start over. So again, I'm going to divide. Guys, if you're not comfortable multiplying by your 12s and you need to list out your multiples, go for it. 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72, but that's as far as I'm going to be able to go. So it can go in six times because 12 times 6 got me to 72. Now, again, I'm going to have to do some regrouping to do this subtraction, but ultimately, it's going to give me an answer of 46 remainder 9. And the same thing we've said the past couple of days. You're not going to go into Staples or Walmart or wherever you're shopping and say, I need 56 remainder nine pages for my binder. You're either going to say, I need 46 pages if you ignore the remainder, 47 pages if you push up, or nine pages if you use the remainder. Now, that automatically gets rid of your answer choice 48. Now, even though 48 pages would fit all your cards, you're getting more than you have to. That's why fewest is important. So if they each fit 12, if I had nine pages, that's going to give me 108 of my Pokemon cards. Guys, I've got 561. Nine pages isn't even close. All right. Then I would say, well, let me try these. I don't care who you are. Don't sit there and tell me you know 46 times 12, boom, off the top of your head. You might have to break that number down. You may have to stack them. I don't care how you do it, but it kind of goes with question number two. So we can knock out 46 times 12, which I'll do pretty quickly. Placeholder. That's going to give me enough room for 552 cards. I need all my cards. If I have 561, 46 pages is not going to be enough. So I would push up. I would get that extra page. And even though that's going to give me more space than I need, 
you would rather have more space than not enough. So if you're looking at your answer choices, that answer choice would have been C, 47. If the question asked how many pages are going to be completely full, then it would have been 46. If it wanted to know how many cards would have been on the last page, it would have been nine. The math doesn't matter if you read it wrong, guys. Those are, those are really good questions uh, to kind of prove, hey, who's taking their time to read these questions. All right, so I tried to trick you on four because the last three or four days, it has said multiple, then factor. But today it said factor, then multiple. Now, look, honestly, that shouldn't make a big difference because you should know those vocabulary words. But I would still break it apart just like I normally would. A factor of 12, meaning I could take these numbers, I can multiply it times something, and it's going to give me 12. So I have 24... Six, eight, and three. 24, six, eight, and three. Guys, 24 is bigger than 12. If you're multiplying a number, it's going to get even bigger than that. So I can't do 24 times anything to get 12. I can do six times two to get 12. So six is cool. I know it's a factor of 12. Guys, I can't do eight times anything to get 12. Eight times one is eight. Eight times two is 16. All right. Three times four will give me 12. So just from the first half of the question, when it says factor of 12, six and three are still good. Now it has to be a multiple of two. And guys, if you list multiples of two, you skip right over three, you land directly on six, <clears throat> that would give you an answer choice of B. So I swapped it up a little bit for you, but again, if you know your facts, that question is not too difficult for you to solve. Last but not least, I've been saying it all week how much I like this question. Hopefully, as the week has gone on, you've shown more and more work, especially if you're somebody who was missing it on Monday. Um, if you're showing more work now, that's great. So which choice below is equal to 7,890? two so we're going to the whiteboard we're going to work them all out a says seven thousands boom 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 eight hundreds boom boom 92 tens if i add those together that gives me eight thousand seven hundred and twenty that's too much it goes beyond what i'm actually looking for so i'm moving on to b i've got five thousands 20 hundreds 89 tens and two ones again now i said uh, a couple days ago normally i don't like adding a bunch of numbers at once but if it's ending with all zeros i'm cool with that um that's ones place is going to give me two tens place is nine hundreds place is eight five plus two gives me seven b gives me exactly what i'm looking for but you better believe I'm checking C and D just in case because nobody is perfect. 78 hundreds, nine tens, and two tens. I bet you some people might have picked that because they thought it went hundreds, tens, ones. It could still, I, I could say the same thing over and over. I could say 78 hundreds, 400s, 200s. You've got to read. Because if you said two ones right there, that would have matched as well. But if you're adding these together, that gives you 7,912, which goes beyond. And last but not least, if you're looking at D, you've got 7,000s, you've got 8,900s, and you could probably stop right there and already see you're going far past where you need to go. But if you add those together, that's going to give you 15,922. Again, it goes way beyond what we are actually looking for. That answer choice would have been B. If you're somebody who's looking at a work paper right now and has solved, or I'm sorry, did, uh, or I guess solved is the word to use, solved out every single one of those answer choices, that is what in my room I like to call EOG effort. That's awesome. Really good work. All right, so you are now getting ready to take your final five, your quiz. So take your time, read the questions. Guys, the beautiful thing about working at home is you're not necessarily on a time limit. If you want to do it once, stop, do it again, go for it. Um, 
ultimately, whatever you get on Fantastic Five is a perfect example of how you worked all week. If you took the time to watch the videos, um, you know, really take your time when you are signing them, not just clicking buttons, it's going to show up in your score. So hopefully once you click submit today, you're going to see that five. Um, there's not going to be a video going over Friday's questions because it's going to be Saturday. That's when you need to relax, sit on the couch, eat potato chips. But this is what it's going to be every week. So um, you'll get a new five sets of you get a new set of five questions on Monday. We'll come back Tuesday with the videos, and we're going to work towards the goal of a getting a five on every single Friday. So thank you guys for watching. Good luck on those questions. Do your best. Enjoy your weekends, work hard, don't drive your parents crazy, and we'll see you on Tuesday, whatever day that is. Thanks for watching.